Well, good evening, everybody. What? It's been a while. I miss you guys. <laughs> I've missed you guys. I tell you, I don't have many viewers, but you know what? This is a good video that I can transfer to when I tell people, go to the head halter. That's what this show today is about. I am Hector Hernandez, and welcome to the Canine Man Show. It's my over 40th show. It is October 20th, Wednesday, around what, 7 o'clock? Beautiful day today. It was. It's starting to get cooler now. But it's nice. It was nice. I'm hoping to cover the head halter today. Now, there is some times where you, where you want to start the head collar very young in um, uncertain dogs. And think about this, there's certain dogs that you can't use a head halter on. Which ones are those, Hector? Well, Boxer, Frenchy Bulldog, a Bulldog. You see what I'm talking about? The flat-nosed dogs, Boston Terrier. Those flat-nosed dogs, it's hard to put, it's hard to put a head halter on them. Um, I'm gonna post a picture of the head halter uh, on my screen here so you see it. This is the one I recommend. Now, why do I recommend this one to start off? I recommend it because there's several reasons. One of them is that it stays under their chin, stays right under their muzzle. Some other ones that you get will come to the side. I like this one that comes straight down. Now, there's a certain way to keep it down also, and we're gonna entertain that, okay? But this is what it looks like, that's the package. Then, you have what it looks like. It, it's got a, a padded part at the, would be the, if you look at where it's gonna go on top of the muzzle, and if you see the safety feature at the bottom. Now, this safety feature, it, it serves two purposes in my eyes. One of a, one purpose, it serves that it keeps the dogs uh, that that um, that ring under the chin a little better. The second purpose it keeps, if that comes off, then you still have the dog attached to something. So it's a good safety feature. I don't use it much at all. I don't use it, but I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it today because it does help keep the the uh, the ring at the bottom of the chin a little better. But that's what it's gonna look like. And that's when it's gonna go on a dog and we're gonna talk about how and why you should use this, okay? Now, the most important thing is getting the dog acclimated to it. What I mean by this is you gotta get the dog used to the collar first. Now, there's several ways to do it. I kinda do it the cheating way. <laughs> I do it the cheating way because I already get off leash on the dog first. So the dog learns not to pull through off leash. Then I put it on the dog. But for most of you who don't come to my one-on-ones or don't come to my class, what I highly recommend that you do is get the dog to walk with you without pulling. So could you use a treat? Absolutely. Could you use a toy? Absolutely. The purpose of this is to teach the dog not to pull first, then go to the head halter. If you go to the head halter first and then teach, and then teach the, um, the no pulling, you're gonna get a hell of a conflict with the dog. So you wanna teach the dog not to pull first, then put it on. One warning to people who put it on first and don't teach it, the, the, the healing without pulling. If the dog pulls with this head halter on, you could cause stress around the back of the neck and spine because the dog is jerking away from you and you're pulling into it. So eventually in time, you're gonna cause some serious stress on the back of their neck spine. So try not to make sure your dog is pulling on this head halter or any head halter for that matter, okay? So teach a dog not to pull first Get the dog acclimated. Could you use treats? Many as you want. As many as you want to teach the dog not to pull. Could you use it with, uh, with the dog 
and it on. Yes, you could. So you could put it on the dog and use treats to get it to walk next to you without any pressure. Without any pressure, just get it to walk next to you. But some of the most difficult dogs is when, they, when you put something around their muzzle, of course they want to take it off. They just want to take it off. So it's a slow process getting that acclimated around their muzzle. So slow process, just putting that over their face is going to be uncomfortable for them. So you only want to do maybe 30 seconds to a minute intervals giving the dog treats. Teaching the dog, when this goes on, you get treats. Teaching the dog, when this goes on, is fun. So it's all positive reinforcement to get them used to it. If you don't train the off lead first. Once you train the off lead first, the dog already knows not to pull, then you can go right to the head halter. And you'll see some videos of that today too. You'll see some videos of that today. All right, let's see, uh, let's see who I got on here. Christy, Christy Botsman's on here. Glad you're on here, Christy. Sabrina, I definitely need this information. I bought one, but want to make sure I'm using it right. Any questions, Sabrina, go ahead and yell them to me, okay? Mike Butts is on here. Thanks for watching my dog today, uh, Mike. Jennifer Candilla, thank you for being here. I'm glad you're on here. Barbara Bond, good evening. Can't wait to meet you this weekend with Clyde, with our Clyde. Yeah, we got class this weekend, don't we, Barbara Bond? We got class this weekend. It's going to be a good class. Adam Gulio, thank you. Man, I miss you, Adam. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm back. All right. I'm glad to be back. I, um, Ryan Woodward's on here. I, uh, I took a little bit of time off. I was, uh, I was doing my, some people say my tour. I, Texas, Illinois, Georgia, and then back to Michigan all in one week. Isn't that crazy? But it's fun because you're helping people because I'm helping people. Uh, my dog liked it too because he was biting people <laughs> as a demonstration, not in a real situation. Head halter. I used this with my dog for about a year, and then I discontinued. Um, I take that back. I used it about six months, um, and then I discontinued it. Because here's what the purpose of the head collar is, Sabrina. The purpose of the head collar, Sabrina, is to teach the dog through habit, listen to this, through habit not to pull. So you shouldn't end up being married to it later on. So you're getting the dog to learn not to pull next to you when he's walking next to you through habit, not through correction, not through jerking, not through the shock, through habit. Now, when you put something around the dog's muzzle, you're taking away its main line of defense. Thinking about that. Its main line of defense is its mouth, using its mouth, and you're guiding the dog where it wants to go. So some of these dogs who are who come to me and have had harnesses on, they have one hell of a conflict learning not to pull because through the harness, it, they've, they've learned not, they've learned to pull. So you're going to get a conflict. So there, a little bit of a conflict, which I call a learning curve, but I don't care. They, they'll go through it. This is why on certain dogs, I don't put the head, the, um, the harness on. I go right to the head halter, even with puppies, even with puppies, Oh, he's I will put doing, a head He's doing excellent for a puppy. As you see here, this puppy. Yeah, he's not fighting it. Under just Walk a little right down under the middle four again, months. Ken, could you please right there? Give me one second. Right down the middle and just got. There we go. Little under four months. And I'll put it on through habit. Is Ken? Ken's walking his little Dalmatian puppy. So through habit, they learn not to pull. They're just getting used to it. They're going to get a little bit of it. And you go down to the level and talk to them and get them to you. Ken, very patient man. Very good. Very patient with his dog. Loved this dog. He was in touch with his feminine side with his dogs. <laughs> he did a great job. But you can start them as puppies to do this. There's nothing wrong with it. They're learning through habit not to pull as puppies. And then they're going to pull... I mean, and then they're going to play like crazy with a ball to get ahead of you and all that. It doesn't matter. But when they're walking next to you, you're going to teach them not to pull. If you do this as a puppy, you don't, get, you don't get as strong as a fight. Now, think about what I did there. If you go back and look at the video, I don't have a collar on the dog. Did you hear that? I do not have a collar on the dog. 
I just use the head halter and that's it. Here's the conflict that you get with some dogs and you got to stay in the side of air. Sabrina, when you go to this, go to an enclosed area and don't have a collar on, just a head halter. Some dogs, as soon as you put a head collar on, they automatically think to pull. So even with the head halter on, they fight more. So I've learned to not have the collar on, just a head halter. Once they've learned it, then you can put the, head, the collar on, then you can attach it to the safety feature. But initially, I do not use a collar around their neck because their brain tells them to pull, no matter what. So nothing is on their neck, just the head halter. And think about it, you're taking away their main line of defense. The parallel to humans is you handcuff them. You handcuff somebody and they struggle. They struggle to get out of it. And same with a the dog. They, you put something around their main line of defense and they struggle to get out of it for two reasons. One, um, they, want to, they want to pull, so there's a conflict. And two, they want flexibility in their mouth. They want to be able to move their mouth around and just like they normally do. And when you restrict that, there's a little bit of battle of wills. On rare occasions, especially a dominant dog, when you put a head halter on them, they believe that it's a challenge. This is only dominant dog. It's a challenge. Eh, some strong-willed dogs. They think it's a challenge and they fight even harder. So with them, I make sure that they get used to the collar with a treat or with a toy before I even put any pressure on. But for the most part, you're not going to have anything around their neck and you're going to start with a head halter. Just start with a head halter. Choking, I mean trachea damage. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I use a harness because I'm afraid of collar and choking. Um, Sabrina, if they're pulling on, the, on that flat collar, then they're doing just as much damage. But yes, one of, there are some dogs who you can't put any collar on their, on their neck or on their, um, yeah, on any pressure, not even a flat collar. Then I go to a head halter. And in rare occasions, I will use a harness, but I'll modify the harness so they don't pull. And then again, I... I if it's really serious trachea and they have to go to a harness, then I make sure that they learn about stress, where the stress is accumulated on the dog because of the harness. And then you're not going to expect the dog to not pull, especially if you got a husky or a hound who's just going to want to pull. I mean, you're going against their instinct. So there's a, there's a bigger conflict there. Uh, I had a question here. Uh, we bought the head halter for Axel, and, and Vinny struggled getting it on, and when we walked... He walked and he pulled right out. That was too unsafe for him on the walk in our sub, so we went back to the pinch collar. I think we probably didn't have it on right. Uh, yes, okay. Jennifer, my guess is that you had it on too loose in the back of the neck. Make sure it's on tight. Let me, uh, let me give you, all right. This is Here's yeah, this so one here. There's a part right here. Okay. That goes on top of their muzzle, and it always snaps behind their left ear. Okay. So it's just like that. Perfect. And then you want it tight behind their neck. You want the back of their neck tight. Yeah, so just like a bra strap. Yep, you just tighten it up. I said that to a lady last week. She goes, Hector, I don't wear a bra. Like, why? Her husband was there. She's like, why'd you say that, hon? <laughs> Got her in trouble. There we go. Well, the good thing is that his ner her nerves did stop. Yeah, she's not drooling as nope, much. Nope. Is that it's, tight enough? Or does uh, it put tight? it up higher. Okay. Right there. Okay. And then and then see if you can tighten it just a little bit more up there. I'm glad you did that because a lot of people do make that mistake. The instructions tell you to have it low. Then we're going to add something to it when we're done that clip onto that leash right there literally that simple now walk her would you please yep and then i will grab this one Malika. nice nice look how easy that is now see you see how that is nice and easy on top of their head if you notice, this is the, I believe this is the first time Morgan had her, this on her dog. 
And if you watch, the dog's the dog already learned off lead. So it was easy for the dog because the dog already learned not to pull. She put the safety feature on there. But remember to put that collar up tight behind their neck, Sabrina. And um, it, uh, let's see who it was. Uh, I'm overthinking today. Uh, Jennifer, put it tight behind their neck. You want that strap. Remember, it's like a bra strap. Just tighten it up. I don't know if you heard that. I, I, I said it to a lady. She goes, I don't wear a bra. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it's like a bra strap. <laughs> it was some fun entertaining, right? Uh, Kate, Kate, it was fun entertaining. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're welcome, Kate. I, I do miss this. You got to remember, it also helps me too. Th these shows help me too. They help. Um, I call them my mental health days. They really do. They really help me a lot. Uh, let me read what uh, Heather says. I'm coming to your November obedience class. A nine-month pug will be joining us. Can pugs wear the head call? Um, I don't suggest pugs can wear it because it doesn't fit them, Heather. It won't fit them. Their, their nose is too flat. You got some boxers that won't fit them, some bulldogs that won't fit, um, Boston Terriers. Um, there's some certain dogs that it just won't fit because they're too flat nose, and it, it, it just won't. So with them... So with them, you could either use that star mark or, um, or a harness, dependent on the dog. You can put a harness or a star mark. The star mark is a plastic pinch collar. And you're not, you're not going to put any pressure on the plastic pinch collar. You're just going to teach them not to pull with it. And then again, if any stress is accumulated, you're going to learn to massage the dog to relax the dog. Very, 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 very important. Uh, well, probably why he does head shoulder stress more. He's one year... Yeah, so if he's been pulling a lot, Sabrina, that, that's probably why. Um, that, that causes a lot of stress around their shoulders and neck if they're pulling with a head halter. Not, not a good thing to do for, for those kind of dogs. Um, so I hope that helped, uh, Jennifer. I hope that helped. Yeah, I've been everywhere. Yeah, it can be taxing, but I like it. I do like it. Thanks for the free entertainment at work. And I hear you got a different job too, Caitlin. Congratulations, by the way. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's go back on to my show. So, so I talked about the use of it. Remember, no, no collar. But, but Jennifer, don't use it in the open area to start with. Go, go, go to an enclosed area, even in your house. Even inside your house to start, get the dog acclimated. In your basement, in your living room, walk around. Get them acclimated there. Make sure it's tight behind the ears, just like Morgan had it with her dog. Behind the ears and put it tight back there because if it's not tight, they can just slip right off over their head. So it's best to have it tight there, but have it, have it like medium taut around their muzzle. Show it, let's show you another video. Let's show you another video. Oh, give me one second. Let me do, let me show you. Now walk with her, I cleared some up. Walk with her, remember, yep, I got a knot on your leash now to help you out. There we go. Here is, here's Laura, Laura Bryant. The hardest thing to remember with the head collar when you start using it is don't jerk. Do not jerk on the collar. This is not a correction collar. This is a dog, this is a collar to guide the dog. It is not a collar to correct the dog. Please remember that. Because what happens is that if you start jerking it around, the dog will start seeing as it a correction. You don't want the dog to see it as a correction. Now, Laura, as you can see here, she put a knot on her leash like I told her, and now she's got something to grab. And we're going to talk about that here in a, little, in a little while here. Very important to have something to grab so you got a little bit of tension. Let me see what somebody wrote here. I'm trying to get to your questions before they pile up. Uh, what do you think about a Delmar Wonder Lead, Hector? Um, I don't know much about it, um, Mary. I really don't. Uh, what I like is I like just something that separates the collar 
from the lead. Also, I don't like a one, a one thing wonder, you know, one that goes here and then attaches and it's a leash too. I just, I like it two things. Just, it just helps me a little bit better. Uh, we'll try that. You're welcome, Jennifer. You're welcome. He paws and rolls around in the head halter to try to get it off. All right, so he's not acclimated to it enough, Sabrina. So get him to like it first before you put any pressure on it. So you're, you're probably starting too fast. So teach him not to pull first. Then get him acclimated to it. Get him to like it. And then get him to even walk with it while you're giving him a treat with no pressure. And then as he gets really good, apply pressure. I would do the opposite. I would teach him not to pull first on the, walk, on the healing then I would put that on. That's what we did with Laura Bryan's dog, that shepherd. We, teach, we taught it not to pull first. Then we went right to the head halter. Same with Morgan's dog. We went off lead and then went right to the head collar. But you can do off lead with treats. You can do off lead with a toy and still get the same results. But you got to get the dog acclimated to it. And the biggest thing, that, especially with men, is that we want to jerk and jerk and jerk. Don't do that. Let the dog fight itself. You want to let the dog fight itself. You do not want to fight the dog. So put a knot really close to the lead as a reference point of where your hand should stay. Now, you can put the knot there, and then she had to put the knot right. She had to put her hand right under the knot. Some people put it on the knot. Some people put it over the knot or adjust the knot, but the whole purpose of the knot is to give you a reference point or something to grab so you got a little bit more, more grip on the lead. And I find this extremely useful when I do the, when I do this, when I do the walking train. I find it extremely useful. Yeah, it's separate. Uh, yeah, I have to look at it, Mary. I'm not too familiar with it. I'll have to look at it sometime this week. Uh, yeah, Laura, that was you. <laughs> that was you. Uh, I'm glad you got to see it. Hi. Hi, Laura. That's a good idea. I got some good ideas, Sabrina. And again, if you got some good ideas, people, let me know. Again, I don't know everything. I know a lot. Um, and I like the head collar. I used it for Milo for about six months, and then I discontinued because he was walking without it. But I didn't want to keep jerking on him. I didn't want to keep correcting him on the collar. So now when I walk him, he pulls very little, but not to the point where it causes stress to my arm and not to the point where he's you know, pulling. It's, we've, we found a happy medium, and, and that's what I like. We found a happy medium. I want to make sure I don't forget anybody. All right, so sometimes the way I like it, some people can walk... Two dogs. Two dogs that used to pull me all the time, and now with their head harness, they do amazing and walk right with me. Thank you, Hector. As you can see, on the harnesses, walking with me, no pulling. I never could have done this a week ago. Mary, I cannot forget your crazy pointers. <laughs> German, po German short hair pointers, they're, they're a different breed of their own, aren't they? Woo! High, strong, very instinctual. Uh, they like the pull. They love the pull. And I don't like using pinch collars. Uh, believe it or not, they do better with shock collars than they do with anything because they handle stress so well. Uh, it's a breed with a high pain tolerance and very good nerves. So, let's see what we got here. See if I got any questions. All right. So, again, I want to talk about the one that I like the most, the walking train head halter. It goes over their muzzle, behind their neck. If you remember how uh, Morgan was instructing it, and you want it tight behind their neck. Sometimes it's too loose and it comes right off, and then you got the safety feature at the bottom here, you have the safety feature, as you see here at the bottom, and it attaches to the flat collar, but you don't want to use the flat collar on it 
in the beginning because the dog will instinctively want to pull. Now, as you've seen the two dogs, you can see how much power steering you have with these head collars. You can have a lot of power steering with them. You don't need to use a lot of muscle. I like them. I like them. Um, I, I think it was like seven years ago, I was at a park, and this elderly lady had one on, and I seen her dog pulling, but, but the dog did great when you put the head collar on. It pulled with a pinch, and then she went to the head collar, and the dog was really good. Um, I prefer this than the pinch. I really do uh, for many, many reasons, but again, uh, just like Sabrina was saying, sometimes they do what they call the alligator roll, and they fight like crazy. If you start jerking when that happens, you're going to create a battle of wills. Don't do that. Let the dog fight itself, and then start walking. When the dog catches up to you in a safety spot, you relax. That's it. It's not that difficult. I, I think it's more time-consuming than anything, or you want to start... You want to start out too fast. You want to start too fast. Here, watch this video again. Well, watch the video again. That padded part goes over the dog's muzzle. And then it always snaps behind the left ear. And you want it tight behind their neck. And here we take our time. And we get it tight behind their neck. And you want it just above their ears also. You don't want it down low. You want it up high. So, Jennifer, if you had it loose, it will just come right off really easy, really easy. And then, remember, you can tighten the bottom of it also. There's a clip right under their chin that you can adjust. And you can do that, and it works really, really well. You're okay, uh, Carol Clark. You're okay. We, I'm, I'm reviewing again just for people who need a second, a second uh, visual. And look at the safety feature. See that clip right there? You can tighten it and lock it. And then the safety feature attaches to their flat collar. This dog picked up on it really fast. Kind of surprised me. Really fast as far as not pulling and as far as... Um, not, not pulling with, the, with the, uh, the flat collar over its neck. Some dogs, as soon as you put that collar over its neck, it pulls like crazy. Not Morgan's dog. Morgan was really serious about walking off leash next to her. And then there's no pulling at all. None at all. Now, she did go through a little learning curve when the dog did pull initially, but this took literally 5, 10 minutes. It didn't take that long. It did not take that long, and she loved it up. Man, what great two dogs she had. So it, it's, it's very important to be patient with that. Is the head collar, is the halty collar the same? Yes, that's the same one. Um, halty head collar, that's what it looks like. I'll show you here. That's what it looks like, Carol. It's okay if you're late. I don't mind doing it two, three times. Uh... Oh, yeah, you really had to put Maggie in her place. They are both using flat collars now. Yeah, it just takes a minute, Mary. Yeah, but you're, you're kind of good at what you're doing, too, Mary. Don't, don't give me too much credit. Uh, yeah, it's you. Uh, Barbara Bond, uh, so what do we use to teach boxers, Clyde, not to pull? All right, so what we do, Barbara Bond, is that we use off-leash first. We do off-leash first. Then we use a star mark. So if you go to my show on teaching a dog not to pull, not, not learning the heel command, teaching the dog not to pull, you'll see a boxer on my show. And that's what I use because they have a flat nose. It won't work. And, and in some dogs, they have a flat nose. If you try to put it on, what happens is that you will leave a very red spot over their nose because it's such a small area. Very, very irritable for the dog. Uh, there's a couple different kinds of halters. I got two fit. Very different. One will slide up almost to his eyes no matter how tight you make it. That's because of his face, Sabrina. So maybe his face is not, maybe his disposition is not going to allow for a head halter. So then you have to go to a, um, a, a star mark collar. Okay, uh, so go to my show on teaching a dog not to pull, and that will help you. And then there's a, there's a, a video, another show that I have on teaching a dog to heal. 
And, that, and that's different than teaching a dog not to pull. There's two different things. I, I want to teach a dog not to pull. I do it with off leash or I could do it with the star mark, either or. And then I go to the head halter, okay? Uh, Barbara Bond, go to, um, go to my show on teaching a dog not to pull. It, I explained the star mark pretty good on there. It, it looks like a pinch collar, but it's plastic. And it's better for short-haired dogs than for long-haired dogs. I don't, even, I don't even like using the pinch collar on, on long-haired dogs. It puts too much stress on their neck. And even though it works, it tightens up their whole body to where it's counterproductive. It's a solution that leads to a problem in, in short. Uh, not really help. It did, Laura. I remember that with you. I remember that with you. We did it outside. Uh, let's see here. Got to make sure I didn't miss anybody. I hope that answered your question, uh, Barbara. Yeah, you, you, you betcha. Where's the best place to get those? Um, I get them on Chewy. That's where I get mine, on Chewy. Or you can get them um, just about anywhere else. But this is the brand you want to get, Walk and Train Head Halter. Now, when I, when I start doing experiments on head collars, I tried every single one out there. And, and just to not name the rest, I didn't like them. They didn't work well. This is the brand that I seen that seemed to work the best, the head collar, because of the way it's designed. And it looks just like this, out of the package. Except it has numbers on it, one, two, three, four, five, where, and then it has a diagram on where the numbers go. But the simple way to, to remember is the padded part goes over the muzzle and then always snaps behind their left ear. If you can remember that, you got it made. The padded part goes over the muzzle and then it snaps behind their left ear. When, when circumstances permit, put the safety feature on the flat collar so it keeps that, that uh, bottom ring under their chin and if it f does slip off, Jennifer, this would be a good safety feature to have, is if it does come off, you're, the dog is still attached to the collar. So there's still some connection to the collar. So, uh, and sometimes people just don't see it, but I like to talk about it. And then don't forget about the knot on the leash. You guys, don't forget about the knot on the leash. It's really good to help you. It helps you get a reference point on what you sh where you should, um, where your hands should be. A good reference point. Give me one second. What's the brand walk and train head collar? Yes, yeah, right here. Um, let me get you the get you the picture right there, um, Carol. Carol Clark, right there. If you look at the picture, walk and train head head halter. If you go to Chewy, uh, and then just hit it and walk, and then N, just like it is, walk, N train, and it'll pop up. Now the sizes. You have to look at the sizes too. They have extra small, small, medium, and large. Extra large, XXL, XXXXXL. So got to get the, the uh, size that you're going to need. So a lot of the times I have to switch. I happen to like the large just because it's got more padding at the top. So if the dog fits a large, I always use the large versus the medium. Sometimes the medium is good, but then I can still fit a large on a medium, so I'll put it on there. So I... I I really look. Um, let's see, Angie. My boy is doing much better with this head cut. Good, Angie. That's good news. I'm glad. I'm glad you said that. Sometimes I like to get a little boost. Thank you for that. Uh, one of one on ones I have looked similar and fits okay. The other one's not at all. But yes, he's been able to slip it off his muzzle. Yeah. You know what? Send me a picture of his head too, Sabrina. See if I can tell you which one to get based on his disposition. Um, I, that might help you, or I may just say, you know what, don't even use one because it, it's just going to come off. So it, it just depends on their disposition of their head, how, it, how it's going to work. Uh, oh, crap, sorry, the pick was hidden by the live thing in the corner. Yeah, no, no problem, it's on there now. It's on there now. Um, if you want, I can move it. Um, here, let me move it. I'll move it right next to my face how's that i'll move it right next to my face so you got it you need to tell me this 
I don't mind you checking me on, on, on live. Carol, give it to me. <laughs> All right, we have any questions here about the head collar? There it is. That's what it looks like. So we got it. Let me see my notes. I talked about the safety feature. I talked about uh, you can walk and run in it. You can walk and run in it. I like to run in it just because it keeps the dog right next to me and it keeps some legs moving. Remember, if the dog stops, try to keep going because remember, if they're, if they're using their two front feet, if they're using the true front feet to walk, they can't use it to pull it off. We have a habit of when the dog stops, we stop. No, just keep walking, even when they stop. But if they hurt themselves, be careful. You get some dogs who want to take it off in the cement, then go to the grass so they don't hurt themselves. But put a knot on it, keep their head up, keep walking without stopping. And then stop, give them some love, and then repeat. But you got to keep walking so they can utilize their front feet for walking instead of taking it off. Very, very important. Uh, Nicole Reese, thank you for watching. Of course, I catch the live show on a topic I don't need help with. Well, Nicole, what do you need help with? Send me a message right now. What do you need help with? And I got, I got a few minutes. I'll jump on that topic for you. All right, uh, Carol, I, I, and I miss you talking about boxers. Well, Carol, what I mean about boxers is that sometimes it doesn't fit. These head collars won't fit on a boxer, so you have to go to a star mark. A star mark collar goes around their neck just to teach them not to pull. But your objective is off leash, okay? Uh, my kid just came in from practice and I was distracted. This type, this type will be okay. Yeah, so, so then use a, use a star mark for a boxer if the head collar doesn't fit. Some boxers, their noses are so flat, it's not going to work. Same with bulldogs. It just won't work. Good to know I can run with bays in the head. Yes, Kelly, giddy up. Giddy up, Kelly. Take him with you. Now, I know the neighborhood you live in, Kelly, so make sure you watch my show on what to do if a dog attacks you. All right, leash one meal, carry some spray. All right. Those are the two that you really should take away from it. Uh, let's see here. All right, Nicole, I'm waiting, Nicole. Let me know what you need help, and I'll throw it in the last 10 minutes of my show. I got about 20 minutes right now. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to watch that, Sabrina. I can't do it right now because I, um, I can't go to it, but I will, I will send you a message after the show and let you know. Uh, Kodiak will dig to attempt to get it off his nose, but he had not yet been successful. Yeah, he just needs more time, Angie. He needs more time to get acclimated to it. So give him some more time. It usually takes four to five days of good use for them to get acclimated to it. So just, just remember that. Rebecca Tierman, thank you for watching. My Malamu Shepherd loves walking off leash in our woods. He respects our boundaries, even if chasing critters. Ah, he, he did good, didn't he, Rebecca? I like that. That's some good news coming, coming from you. That's some really, really good news. Uh, good to know I can, okay, that was uh, Kelly. All right, that was a head collar. Let me do a quick review. Uh, get the dog acclimated first. Try not to use a flat collar on the dog because the dog will instinctively pull. So just use the head collar, that's it. Get them acclimated to it with treats, with a toy. Get them to like it. Then get them to, then get them to not pull, not pull. Either off leash or with a treat or with a toy. Once you get them not to pull, then put it on them and put a little pressure on, just like you've seen Morgan do with her dog. Put a little pressure on, then, then you can start walking. But make sure you walk. If you stop, the dog's going to take it off. Keep walking even if the dog stops. If the dog stops, you keep walking. Pull, but don't jerk on the leash. Pull on the leash, don't jerk. When they catch up to you, relax on the lead so they know that being next to you is their safe spot. 
Being next to you is their safe spot. Make sure that collar's up high, behind their ears, and tight. If it's not, Jennifer, it's going to come right off. Make sure you have the safety feature on in case it does come off, Jennifer. Clip it onto the flat collar, and away you go in case it does come off. At least you're still tethered to the dog. All right, you're still tethered to the dog. It's, you, it's usually just as we are getting ready to leave once walking, he leaves it. Be, yeah, so he just needs more time. You're right, he, Angie, he just needs a little bit more time. Yeah, give him some more time. Uh, Barbara Bond, my goal, off leash, very stubborn boxer. Oh, Barbara. It's kind of easy with a boxer. You'll see, you'll see. All right, you'll see. Actually, I got one, my friend's dog, in it too. Good, Sabrina. You gonna start being a trainer, Sabrina? <laughs> we need more trainers out there, at least good ones. We need more trainers who don't use treats. Now, I say this respectfully. We, there's just not many of us. A lot of people use treats. And you should see how many people come to me We've tried treats, it's not working. We've tried treats, it's not working. So many people call me and text me. We got treats, it's not working. It's frustrating. So then what I tell them, what I tell them is, we need more trainers who, yes, understand treat is a good concept, but there's other methods other than treats, like follow through, like boundaries, setting boundaries. That's what I mean. Uh, let's see here. What is the most stubborn dog breed you have worked with? Um, Rebecca, it's not really the breed. It's the temperament that, that I've worked with. So I've worked with almost every breed that has been stubborn. And what I mean by stubborn, uh, Rebecca, I mean strong-willed. They, they always want to outthink you. And I get, I've gotten chihuahuas that were strong-willed. I've gotten great Danes that were strong-willed. But one of the most difficult dogs to train are dogs with really good instincts. Because remember, instincts, you have to counter instinct. You counter instinct with obedience. So the more instincts the dog has, the more obedience you need to counter that. And that makes them very highly intelligent and makes them really hard to train. Dogs are a bit different. I do a lot of reading and research. Now, Sabrina, there's, there's, you're going to get flooded with research and reading. If you want to learn it, get out there. Get out there with different dogs and train them. That's where you learn it. It's nice to read, but you're going to have to apply all of that, and then you're going to start formulating your own method of training, and it'll just start clicking, and it'll, it'll be good. But you got to get out there and learn. Probably owner error. Well, not really. It's trainer area. T trainer error. I have a, I have a, a, a Mimi on my, my first-class dog training. There's no such thing as a bad owner and bad dog, only bad trainers. And, and I'm going I'm, to I'm stick to that. It's our responsibility as trainers to educate the owners and train the dogs on what method works best for the dog. So that's on me, Barbara, not on you. I thought I seen a... Oh, here is, here, here is uh, Nicole Reese's question. Give me a second. Preacher's new thing is when I stop to talk to someone, she starts directing attention, such as mouthing me, she walks great with a flat collar. All right, so what I would do, um, Nicole, is make her lay down next to you and step on the lead close to her collar. That's that simple. So have her lay down, step on the lead close to her collar. That will teach her that when you stop, she is to lay down and just lay there. Now, by stepping on the lead close to the collar, she doesn't get enough leash to bite. That's going to help. Next show, let me know how it goes. Uh, I'm trying to, okay, yeah, I agree. Most dog problems are people issues. Well, they are, but remember, Sabrina, we, we as trainers, I'm going to include you in training since you've, you said you trained your neighbor's dog. We as trainers have to um, understand that there's, you, can train, you can train a dog in diff using different methods of training. There's many different methods. I use eight. And, and a, a lot of the times, the dogs that come to me, Rebecca, to go back on your question, the stubbornness, I get a lot of stubborn dogs, Rebecca, in my one-on-one, in my -on -one, tremendous amount. And I can't tell you how many have said to me, Hector, you're the fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth trainer we've gone to. 
Everybody uses treats. The reason why we're going to you is because we read your website and it said you don't use treats a lot. And we're here. And, and, and a lot of the times I've said, did any of these trainers tell you not to come to me? And they said, yes. And where did you end up? Here. So it's very, very important to, as, as, to know that there's more than one way to train a dog. If I could just use treats, you know how easy my job would be? But I wouldn't be, fulfill, I wouldn't be fulfilling your expectations as dog owners, like off-leash. Like off-leash. I, 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 I had a trainer that said that she could do off-leash with treats on a dog chasing a squirrel and calling it back. I still haven't got that yet. Now, granted, there was one trainer who challenged me on it, but her dog wouldn't even chase a ball. Uh, this is not fair. Your dog won't even chase a ball. Of course it's not going to chase a squirrel. It has no prey drive. Get a dog that's got prey drive and do the recall, and then let's see if a treat will work. So the reason why treats don't work on the recall is because when they run after something, that's self-rewarding itself. You have to teach them, stop what you're doing. That's with boundaries. Come back to me. Very, very important. Uh, I watch a lot of different trainers and use different met different things with dogs. So many, many work well. Yeah, so so try to try to get your own style then, Sabrina. Don't don't get stuck on, on an, another trainer's style. I was talking to Jeff uh, about this. He's a he's a great trainer. He's gonna, he's up and coming trainer here in the Mid Michigan area. At least I hope he is. And um, I, I Jeff Artaby is gonna, is his name. Um, and he's really good at what he does, but, and he's, he's, he's learning different methods, but what I want him to do is I want him to develop his own style, just like I want you to, Sabrina. Develop your own style, find your threshold on what dog you want to work with, and stick to that until you get really good at that, and then go to another dog, go to another temperament. Nothing wrong with that. I know, Nicole, sometimes they're very simple. It's frustrating. Um, one of the things people say to me, um, it's so, it's so simple, it's so simple, it's difficult to understand. Do you hear that? It's so simple, it's difficult to understand. But I get what you're saying. I can't wait until you get to work with my daughter's pup, Thor. He is definitely a strong-willed dog. Ah, oh, remind me. Remind me, Rebecca. I'm looking forward to it. Or have her remind me. Chris Schultz is on here. My friend, Chris Schultz. I saw you yesterday, Chris. I'm glad I got to see you right before you left. What a good man. You got one of my t-shirts. All right, I'm glad you see me. Robert Watts is here. What's up, Robert? I'm glad you're on here, my friend. Let's see here. You're welcome, Rebecca. You are welcome. Charlie Williams, I remember you. I have a hound that is low to the ground. I am starting him on rally and competitive obedience. How do you suggest teaching him to keep his head up? Um, can you use treats to get his head up? Uh, if you can use treats, try that uh, and, and get him to look up. Now, this is, how I get, uh, this is how I would get my dog to look up. First, teach him that treats come out of your mouth. So... Put some small treats in your mouth and let them see you spit the treats out of your mouth. The reason why I don't like hands for dogs like yours, because what happens is that they will only look through their peripheral vision to see if your hand has a treat. If you have it in your mouth, they have to look straight up at you. They have to look straight up at you, Charlie. So teach your dog to look at your face by spitting treats out of your mouth. Small pieces of hot dog. The treats, try not to use dog food. <laughs> um, and then the dog will learn cheese and just spit. And the dog will learn to always look at your mouth. And then when you're walking, spit them out of your mouth and see if your dog will look up at your face. I don't say, look, look at me. I don't say, watch me. I don't do that. I want to teach the dog naturally to look at me and to get rewarded for it without me telling it. That, get some smart dogs who will look away just so you can say the command and so they would get a treat. So I just stay away from that and just do it and until the dog looks at me, then I do it. The dog will learn. If it looks at me, it's going to get a treat. No, no command, no nothing. Just a volunteer. The dog thinks he learned it himself, and he's got it. 
Uh, let's see here. Do you think that you can train a dog and have it stick in its owner doesn't keep it going? Um, no, it does. Sabrina, you be surprised how many dogs, if you train it, and if the owner doesn't follow through, it's not that the dogs forgot it. The dog just doesn't do it. Believe me, when you, when, if you would get that dog back like in six months, it would do everything you tell it. It would remember everything. I mean, my dog knows over 50 tricks. I'm not doing every trick every year. I just did a trick the other day that I haven't done in a year. The dog did it. They remember it. But if you don't, if you don't enforce it, then they're not going to do it. But they've not forgot, they haven't forgot about it. Trust me, they don't forget about it. We think they do, but they haven't. They haven't. I'm trying to get a topic for next week. Oh, excuse me, my next show. I don't know when it's going to be. I'll post it. I have to look at my schedule. I know next Wednesday I am in um, Bay City doing a talk. And the Wednesday after that, I'm in Indiana, Indianapolis, doing a uh, state conference. And then the Wednesday after that, I am on vacation. Damn, do I need a vacation. Um, and then the Wednesday after that, I think I'm here. So uh, it will probably be in like uh, November, the third week of November, uh, something like that. The third or fourth week of November. Uh, third of week of November, I think it's Thanksgiving. So maybe it'll be after that. But nevertheless, I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm not sure yet what show I'm going to have yet. I got a list of, I think about 10 shows I have to do. But I just have to see what, uh, what I have time for. What I have time for. Uh, we don't run in our neighborhood, but I will watch the replay. Yeah, I don't blame you, Kelly. Um, I don't blame you. You just set yourself up to fail. Uh, you have a good... Um, the park there right next to you, the river trails that you can run to, not too far from you, that's not too bad. Uh, I haven't heard too many bad stories about loose dogs in that area there. Um, Grand Woods is a good one. Um, I used to take my dog to to run with on a leash, and that was a really good one too. I very rarely came across um, difficult owners with their dogs, very well respected. Uh, vacation, you know what that is? I'm telling you what, there, Shane, I'm glad you're on here, by the way, Shane. Um, I, I tell you what, once one thing that I had to learn is, is, is you got to take some mental, mental health days for yourself. Um, you are no good to the people that you help if you don't take care of yourself first. I know some people think that's narcissist. I don't. It starts with you. And the ripple effect, it starts with you. You mentally, you get yourself mentally, uh, mental health, get your health mentally healthy, and then you can help other people. There's nothing, there's nothing that's, that says that's, that's not a bad thing. It's, 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 it's necessary. It's necessary. Um, so, yeah, I, I do have to start taking a little more vacation. When I was gone and I was in Georgia, I wanted to spend some time where I was, but I wanted to come home even more. Uh, and, and, and tell you what, I wanted to come home to my cat. I miss my cat. <laughs> I got a cat. Uh, I named her Bree Lena. Uh, and, and, and guess what, everybody? She snuggles with me. My dog doesn't snuggle, but my cat does. I wake up and my cat's right next to me, purring. My dog doesn't. I got my cat because it helped my dog when I lost Jello. Um, my, my Malo started to get very nervous by himself. And uh, that lasted two weeks, and I said, I got to get another animal. But I didn't want to get another dog because I'm gone a lot. So I got a cat, and this cat and Malo, oh, my goodness. You think they were lovers. Uh, they're, but Malo needed it. And then I needed it, too. I needed it. I needed to, um, to, uh, to help me through the loss of Jello. And the cat is helping a lot, and she snuggles with me. Jello could didn't even snuggle with me, so I, I got I got best best of both worlds with this cat. Totally off topic. Should I allow the kid to play with the laser pen with Kodiak, like running him back in the yard and forth to chase red and light? Angie, listen to this. Easy answer. Absolutely not. Don't do that. You can make your dog neurotic. 
Now, a cat, yes, not a dog. Please stop doing that. Teach him to use either a flirt pole or a ball, but not the laser for the dog. I have seen dogs get so neurotic with the laser, and then it transfers to shadows, and then it transfers to anything that they see that, that's, um, that's moving light. just drives them crazy, very crazy. So very good question, and the answer is absolutely not. Your kid's heart's in the right place, but it drives dogs crazy. Get them to play with a flirt pole or just a ball. Good question. You know what? I haven't had that question. I'm glad you said that. Chris Schultz, Ziggy sleeps with, with, he sleeps with you in the bed. I might have to borrow Ziggy, Chris. <laughs> uh, brother, burnout is for real. Hey, you're not kidding. You're not kidding, Shane. I, I've talked to many men around the country that they, they just don't take a vacation. They're married to their jobs, and you cannot be married to your job. You cannot allow your job to consume you. You have to take mental health days. You have to take a vacation. It is mandatory to take those mental health days. Even right today, I had a talk in, in Traverse City, and, and, and then I went, and, uh, I went to a friend's house really quick to look at his dog, and then I came straight home for my mental health release. Every time I do a public speaking engagement, to me, it's also mental health because I release a lot of energy when I'm yelling and talking. So that decompresses me and relaxes me. Without that, I'd go crazy. I do like my quiet days, but for the most part, I want to release. I get really animated. I get really crazy when I'm doing public speaking, but I release all of that energy. And, and remember, when we talk, when we, when, when we communicate, we feel through conversation. So when we're talking, we're emotionally releasing ourselves. And we need that. That's why it's important for us men to talk about our problems. It's so important for people to talk about their problems, not just men. I say men because we, we, have, we have a culture not to. But it's very important to talk. And this is when I'm talking in Facebook Live, it releases me. It, it, it provides that emotional release. And at the same time, I'm helping people. I'm helping people with their dog issues. So it, 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 it's two benefits. It's really good. Uh, let's see. I have a dog and two or three cats in bed with me at night. Oh, my goodness. Are you lucky? Other than the laundry part, you're lucky. Uh, Kristen Grove is on here. Kristen, I haven't seen you on here in a while. I got your T-shirt. I just got to get your address. Can you message me your address? Because I got your T-shirt. and I want to get a T-shirt for you. And uh, let me know who else wants one in your family. All right? Let's see what, if I missed a question. Uh, let's see. I think I got all the questions. It's coming up on 8 o'clock. Again, you guys, great show on the head halter. And never off topic, Nicole. Always a good question. If I can't answer it right there, I'll answer it later. I might be on Saturday. I might be on Saturday. We'll see. I have obedience class that, uh, this weekend, uh, 2 to 4, and then at 4.30 to uh, 6.30. And I might come on at 8. I'm not sure yet. I have to see how I feel. And then Sunday I have class this weekend. Uh, should be a good class. I got some good students. I read, I read their bio about their dog. Uh, got some good difficult ones. My goal is always off leash in my obedience class. I limit the class so I only have five in my obedience and ten in my puppy class. And some of you guys have been to my classes. You'll know why I limit them. I want to spend all my time with you. I don't want to, you know, only get a little bit of time. I want all of all of me, all of you, in that class. And five is good. And puppies, since I love puppies so much, I wish I could get twenty in there, but. 10's my limit. Sometimes I do 11, but for the most part, 10. And uh, I get to help all the puppies. I get to help all the puppies. Usually a lot of fun. Puppy class is a lot of fun. Uh, let's see here. And then I have a helper. I have a helper, Brianna. Uh, that's her name. If you guys haven't been to my class, she's learning how to do obedience. It's her passion. 
She's a little shy, but she's getting out there and starting to get out there. I'd rather deal with someone who's shy than someone who's arrogant. You can work with someone who's shy. She'll get it. It'll click, and then she'll start taking over class. Jeff, Jeff uh, Artaby is very confident. He's not arrogant. He's confident he's going to be an excellent trainer when he, when he decides to make that step. And then Sabrina, I hope you can make that step too because we need more trainers who are not married to just treats. I'm not saying that treats are bad. I'm saying there's other methods for different temperamental dogs that you can use too. If you use treats on the wrong dog, it's not going to work. You're not going to fulfill the owner's expectations. You're going to make the dog look good, but it's not going to be functional. It's not going to be functional. Uh, let's see here if I got any other questions. Christian Grove, been so busy, I missed this. I, uh, you, you can't say that. No, I'm kidding. You got a big family, great family, great husband. It's okay. I'm glad you're on here anyways. Uh, let's see here. You're welcome, Barbara. You're welcome. Looks like I'm getting a little bit of video interruption too. I think we got a storm coming. I think we got a storm coming. So we'll call it quits for today. I'll post when my next show is and the topic of my next show. Thank you for being here at the Canine Man Show. And again, my name is Hector Hernandez. If you have a suggestion for a show, let me have it. If you have a suggestion for a show, let me have it. I want to hear it if you have suggestion. If not, we will see you next, next show. We will see you then, and we will make sure that you have fun. Make sure that you take some mental health days. Make sure, make sure that you relax and take a vacation. Make sure that you value your family. Make sure that you value your loved ones. I value you. I thank you for being here. And like always, I love you for being here. You're giving me your time, and that's more important, and that's more valuable than money. We'll see you next show. Thank you for being here, and I love you guys.